me welcome everybody uh, to the to the sixth Ivo webinar, uh, where we have the title of uh, what's what's after the Swedish EU presidential challenges for late work policies in the digital demographic and green transition. So uh, yeah, my name is Andreas Klingebiel. I'm uh, chairing, uh, or I have the honor to chair uh, today, or to be asked to chair to, uh, today. And uh, well, maybe one word uh, on, on, on IVO for those that uh, are not familiar uh, with, with IVO. IVO is a, is a research program. It's a collaborative and comparative research program with partners uh, and from Sweden, Poland, UK, and Germany coordinated at Linköping University by us at the Division Aging and so Social Change. We try to extend the body of knowledge and we uh, try to also provide and discourse evidence for policies uh, to ensure individual company and social benefits uh, from longer life as a focus on working life. And uh, this is also why we have the webinar series. Uh, um, but we, we try to uh, have a discussion uh, among researchers, but also between researchers and policymakers, policy stakeholders uh, on, on these issues. And so, uh, yeah, today's uh, webinar is about the relation between late working life, social change as we see it, and the Swedish EU presidency. And I'm happy to have uh, uh, three uh, really interesting participants here uh, to, to give uh, give us input. One is Indre Genelito, who is a researcher at, in Ivo at Linköping University, and we will start with a research input. And then we have two research uh, uh, policy uh, uh, contributions, policy comments. You have to decide how you want to des describe it. Uh, one is by Lars Jörgren from the Confederation of the Swedish Enterprise, Svensk Neringsleaf, so taking the employer perspective on the issue. And then we have the honor to have Helena Reinström from the left municipality, which is not ju just one or is a municipality in the in the Swedish north, but basically one of the, the or basically the prominent Swedish municipality when it comes to green transition and green and greening jobs. And you're quite active in the in the discussion also. And I'm happy to have you here, and uh, I'm looking forward to have all the three presentations uh, in the next 30, 40, 30, 40, 45 minutes. And we can have some comments or some questions in between, but the discussion afterwards in the end, I think is most fruitful. And I hand over to Indra simply to start and uh, to give your research input from the other perspective. Thank you, Andreas. Um, I hope you can see my screen now. Definitely. I just wanted to mention that we are going to record this webinar as well. Um, Yes, it's uh, an honor to be a part of this webinar, and um, I am uh, Indra Genelita, as Andreas mentioned, I'm working at Ivo, and I would like to talk about the new Swedish EU presidency agenda and the aftermath. I want to start with the context for the Swedish EU presidency, and we know that European societies are going through a triple transition, which is demographic transition, our societies are aging, digital transition, which is social consequences of the increased technology use, and the green transition, which are the consequences for the society of the decarbonization. We also, uh, as European societies, are going through various crises, and we had three major crises in a short period, uh, which is also referred to something as a period of a perma-crisis or a permanent crisis. We started with the financial crisis in 2008 and 9, uh, and the response here, the policy response, was cuts in public sector, rolled back social support, also known as austerity measures. Then we were hit by the COVID-19 health crisis, uh, which also affected the economies, and the main response was support for business and extended unemployment protection, something that was termed as social investment strategy. The war in Ukraine and energy crisis, the third crisis, um, was responded um, by the military support, humanitarian support, and support for households. So we see again the continuation of the social investment. Um, the triple demographic, digital and green transitions um, are also affected by the crisis in various ways both strengthening and mitigating their effects. The previous research on crisis shows that whether its origins are financial, health-related or war-related, they have consequences for economies and labor markets. The character of the crisis determines what sectors will be affected most, 
and they varied. Um, but the most affected individuals were always in these crises, the ones who already were disadvantaged on the labor market. Digitalization and green transitions, as well as crisis, has unequal effects. And if not properly addressed in policy, they increase the inequalities in the societies. So the agenda for the so-called trio, France, Czechia and Swedish, and their program came after um, the COVID crisis and before the uh, Russian invasion to Ukraine. So at the time, it was formulated as four priorities, protecting citizens and freedoms, developing a strong and vibrant economic base, building a climate neutral, green, fair and social Europe, and promoting European interests and values on the global stage. But the Russia's invasion and initial shock has adjusted the presidency agendas. And here we see that economic resilience became dominant. Demographic green and digital transitions were overshadowed by a military conflict, political and economic turmoil. And the trio's initial joint agenda was pushed into the background. Then when the Swedish um, EU presidency agenda was presented, we could see that it was already after the initial uh, shock. And here it is stated that while decisive action has been taken uh, to the reference of the military action and humanitarian actions, it is imperative that we stay firm in our transition to the green economy and safeguard the basis of our economic model for the long-term growth. And we see that the main priority, protecting citizens and freedoms, was turned into priority over security and unity. Developing a strong and vibrant economic base was uh, addressed as competitiveness, competitiveness. Building a climate neutral, green, fair and social Europe was reduced to green and energy transitions. And promoting European interests and values on the global stage um, now has a focus on democratic values and the rule of law. So to look a bit closer to these different um, priorities, we see that security and unity is focusing on security and defense policies. And here, Russian invasion is seen as an external threat, crisis, and a time for a united EU policy response. The competitive, competitiveness uh, priority is focusing on economic resilience. And digitalization here is mentioned as a means for the economic growth and the grow, growing economies equalized to a resilient economy. The green and energy transitions focus on reducing energy prices and energetic independence through reform of the sector. And achieving the climate goals is portrayed as a win-win which brings competitive economies and increased security uh, as referring to the uh, energetic independence. Democratic values and the rule of law focus on rule of law and human rights in a democracy. And here democratic values seen as a core for internal cohesion, economic growth and global influence. So they see that this changing EU presidency or the political agenda has uh, two phases. The initial shock of the Russian invasion and its consequences on the economy caused military reaction and humanitarian support, also support for households to cope with energy prices. And then the adjustment phase showed that while initial reaction still remains, the policy response is a threefold aiming to use the crisis for upscaling the system. And that is, for example, energy sector reform or um, defense focused on defense policy. Uh, coming back to the adjusted status quo, which is focused on green transition. And here with reference to digitalization, gr green transition would mean more economic growth. And as I said, economic growth equals resilience. And returning to the democratic foundations and the human rights. So this adjusted political agenda raises the question, what happened to the social Europe that we saw on in the initial agenda? 
Is inclusive and equal prolongation of late working life still an issue within the new political agenda? And what about social, not only economic resilience? Let's look closer at the events during the EU presidency. And then here we see that extended working lives were featured very moderately in close to some somewhat um, 200 meetings planned in Sweden. The aging societies were often addressed through the challenges to welfare states, uh, increased care demands, improved health, and in relation to skills, reskilling and upskilling, as well as green skills, and as well as depopulation affecting regional and industrial policy, and for example, the initial focus of so-called industrialization of the North that uh, started the EU presidency uh, or Swedish EU presidency. The one exception should be mentioned is the meeting hosted by the Swedish Minister for Older People and Social Security, and the part of this meeting dedicated, uh, part of this meeting was dedicated to extended working life. So to now understand the context and the problems uh, we are dealing in our current societies, we need to talk about uncertainty. The digital and green transitions and crisis have unequal effects for the labor market and individuals. And the crises are more common and economy have not resumed the same growth since the crisis in 2008 and 9. And we see the consequences of that. We cannot ignore that societies are aging and labor force is shrinking. And a technological advancement will not compensate for these labor shortages. Well, at least not yet. So what is after the Swedish EU presidency? The way forward is to focus from focusing on economic growth and economic resilience to focus more on green and sustainable growth and social resilience. To do that, we need to adjust our labor markets, education systems and social support systems to deal with that uncertainty. And here, inclusive and equal prolongation of late working life comes into picture and should remain on the new political agenda. It is one of the key priorities for building socially sustainable, green and crisis resilient aging societies. Thank you. Thank you, Indra. Uh, do, we do, do we have any quick questions on, on this or so? Because uh, I think this... Uh... For for me, the, at least from just thinking from behind, the, the the this underdeveloped connection between the green and the gray is maybe uh, uh, quite quite interesting under the under the condition of the of the lack of of of, uh, of, of qualified labor in, in an aging society. At least that's where we come from. But it, it would be good to 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 discuss this from a from a, from a policy perspective. I would say if you don't have further questions or quick questions at that moment, that can't wait as contributions to discussion afterwards. Well, then, thank you, Indra, again, and I hand over thank to you. Lars um, to to, to uh, give a uh, policy input, maybe also a reaction uh, on, on this. Yes, yeah. yeah. thank, thank you very much. Uh, and thank you for the opportunity of, of being here. Uh, and and I will try to, to give you some, some input from the Confederation of Swedish Enterprise, where I work as a senior advisor and uh, my main working tasks is related to to analyze and try to understand the uh, restructuring of the Swedish uh, business sector and and uh, first of all I totally agree on the three transitions the demographic the digital and the green one and uh, the confederation has totally uh, totally supports uh, I mean the, the the need for a digital and green transition Definitely. And regarding the EU presidency, we worked very closely together with the Swedish government in terms of, of the need to focus more on competitiveness being sort of the, the main, well, main factor for creating both, both resilience and also so uh, resources for, for, for the society. So competitiveness is sort of a, a main question for us. But otherwise, uh, 
I thought of, of discussing somewhat more, especially the, the effects of digitalization on the labor market. Uh, much of what I will have to say also is true regarding the, the green transition. Uh, but, but speaking mostly of, of digitalization, first of all, if we go take the next slide, this is, of course, obvious and well known to all of you that digitalization sort of affects all parts of, of society. Tougher competition, everything is open to everyone, information is, is there. Uh, in, in many cases, more information than, than you actually can, can uh, um, take in, actually. A more rapid restructuring of, of the business sector, definitely a more rapid restructuring of, of society as a whole, a more rapid restructuring of household behavior, etc. And definitely what we see is need for new skills, rapidly changing need for, for new skills. That's also as much true about the green transition. Uh, we see organizational restructuring, again, as true for, for green transition. We see new sectors and businesses uh, that's very much focused on if you read the press, etc. But primarily, as we see it, what is changing is actually processes in all organizations. It's all kinds of jobs, all kinds of processes are affected uh, by digitalization, but also to a growing extent by the green transition. Another interesting thing, talking about digitalization, talking about the, the need for, for new resources, the possibility to, to build a more even society, is the potential for more efficient public sector given the digitalization. I mean, maybe improved care, healthcare, etc., given new techniques, etc. And one interesting thing, I think, is sort of the need to rethink economic policy to some extent. Can we actually measure quality? Can we actually measure long-term uh, sustainability? In well, well, when we rethink economic policy, how much of the traditional way of measuring the economy is still reliable? That, I think, is a very uh, important question when discussing long-term economic policy in different, in different aspects. And... Uh, Going to the next slide, I think looking historically, you know this as good or better than I do, that a higher degree of automation and growth has led to workers working lesser, uh, few, fewer hours, having more time off, which in turn stimulates consumption, stimulates the emergence of new businesses, maintenance services, etc. And this will, as, as we see it, probably con continue and, and digital technology, uh, but also green technology, will change business condition and interdependencies within the business sector, within the society as a whole, which potentially has great significance for business, for trade, for growth policy priorities, etc. Probably we will have to rethink a number of traditional policies for, for uh, uh, business support or, or, or different kinds of support schemes, for example. Uh, looking at the next picture, focusing on digitalization, you probably know this as, as again as well as I do. Sweden, uh, whatever kind of, of ranking you look at, Sweden come out among the top countries. This is the IMD business school from, from Switzerland, Sweden being number three in total, and, and whatever aspect you, you look at. Uh, maybe not possible to see in, in the diagram, or, or maybe it is possible, but anyway, Sweden comes out rather good in all, however you try to, to measure uh, digital competence, uh, digital connectivity, etc., etc. And the same thing is true if, if we look at the next slide, looking at the DESI, uh, the DESI studies from, from EU, Again, Sweden being number four in, in uh, among the EU countries, as you can see, ranking high in all different aspects, whether you look at, uh, at human capital or connectivity or integration of digital technology or digital public services. And uh, next slide, if you look at sort of more coming into the labor market, 
what does it look like in Sweden? You can see that, well, the different areas here points to a good position, both in terms of, of basic digital skills, uh, above basic digital skills, and, and enterprises, not least, enterprises providing ICT training. Sweden turns out to, 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 to be rather well positioned compared to other EU countries anyway. So it's sort of a good starting point when, when discussing uh, the need for, for new skills and the possibility to, to uh, supply these new skills to, to the working population and not least to the older elderly working po population. And the same again, uh, if we look at next page, it's just a, a couple of other Again, actually showing very much the same the, the same thing, a rather good positions. Sweden individuals and companies are well posed to to uh, actually take advantage or to have somewhat smaller restructuring problems in this new digital uh, world. <clears throat> And uh, when we ask our companies, our member companies, for example, next slide, you can see that digitalization is actually seen much more as a possibility in Sweden than as a threat. Of course, to some extent, it's both seen as a threat and a possibility, but companies actually perceive themselves as being rather well positioned compared to their competitors abroad. So, so we start from, from a rather good situation in that sense. Uh, yeah, next slide. In principle, when, when, when you think about this new technique and also to a large extent, if you think about green technolo technology, uh, but apparent, most of all digital is, is of course some kind of general technique like electricity. Some jobs would definitely disappear, but much more important, all will be affected. I think we often focus just on jobs disappearing, etc. but I think it's the Overall, the thing, the most important thing is that uh, all jobs will be affected both by the digital transition, but also by the green transition, more or less. Again, the same is, is true for companies. Some companies will disappear, but all will be affected. And actually all communication, all information will be affected. And all, as I said, all processes within companies from purchase, and hiring to marketing and sales. Everything will actually be affected. And to a large extent, this is true also for, for the green technology. And then sort of discussing challenges. The first one is of course, how to attract skills. Uh, the right-hand side of, of this slide, unfortunately in, in the Swedish, but, but the highest staple is actually lack of, of, of um, the problem of finding uh, the correct skills. And you see, that's all the biggest uh, growth problems for companies in Sweden. And as we see it now, we have a forecast of around 70,000 to 100,000 IT specialists missing well, when we ask our fellow mem member companies in five years time. And then again, the, the skill shortage is, of course, a problem of, of the educational system. It's a problem of, uh, of, of uh, company training, etc. But it also connected to a much broader uh, so society problems, sort of shortage of housing, taxes, uh, working permits, does education pay off, etc., etc. So we have a major problem regarding skills, and would you then to this add the need for green skills? Looking at, at elderly people, what we see here, it's still not that many uh, from, from the whole working population that are above uh, 64 years old, but it's rapidly increasing in the, the share and number of elderly working. The same is, is true if we look at the next slide. But actually, nowadays, around 20% of all 65 to 74 years old are, are working. And this might be the sort of most important section. How do we actually make sure that these people get the, the uh, 
knowledge in terms of, of, of um, digitalization, etc., digital skills. One important thing I think in Sweden really is the new general agreement on retraining between the labor market partners uh, from, from this autumn, which covers advice, guidance, uh, purchase of training, purchase of validation, etc., on different kinds of skills, the possibility for supplementary study support that complements the adjustment study support that's already there. So that much more people can actually study with 80% of their salary and thereby keeping or, or, or upskilling their, their, their knowledge. And also short-term study support of up to 70% of the salary for studies that are shorter than one week. Also one way of sort of improving the, the skill situation of Swedish business in terms of digital, but also in terms of, of uh, green transition. Uh, one can also ask, think, think about this regulation. We might have to look over some kind of regulation that supports a more flexible business and working life. That's, I think, is a, one, one, one major question, sort of, given that there will be more small companies, new companies, that are in a world where skill, the demand for skills or will change rather rapidly. There's great risk with new hires. How do we sort of take account in, into of that into our different kind of systems, not least the social security systems? There will be new forms of employment, etc. And more people will probably go between employment, entrepreneurship, studies, etc. And sort of our societal systems are more or less based on being one. You should work as long as you can in one by one employer, sort of a lifelong working uh, process. Is really what is being well, our, our system is based on, and the question is, will this system work within this this new, more of more rapidly changing environment? And also, what one might must discuss is some kind of new kind of leadership in organizations. I mean, much more hybrid work, some kind of digi-physical. And how does this, how, how do you change control documents? How do you change routines? How do you check work environmental responsibility, etc.? There's a number of sort of more in-company questions that will have to be addressed in, in, in a way. So, next one. Yeah, it's it's actually what what I think. We very much will change so, sort of new new jobs, new new companies. But I think the most important change is within jobs and within companies, not the ones that disappear or totally new. That's true both for for the digital and the green transition. I think, and just to to round up, uh, the next slide, please. Yeah, Sweden could benefit. As, as we see it, relatively high IT knowledge, awareness, connectivity, companies well positioned, relative high investments in skill competence on firm levels, and the important labor market partners agreement. But on the other hand, still adult training, retraining remains the issue. How to attract skills, not least from, from abroad, a need to reform regulation drawn for another age, and the need for new kind of leadership within all kind of organizations. And my final slide, I think, is sort of, I, I, are we actually sort of talking about digitalization? Are we asking just these questions? As social scientists often do due to the lack of data, shouldn't we discuss AI instead? Sort of we focus mainly on, on digitalization and green transition. Maybe it's AI that we, to a large extent should, should focus on already now, not to be sort of overrun by, by the developments. So that's my, my slides. Thank you very much for listening. Yeah, thanks a lot for the inspiring talk, especially also, not just especially, but inspiring also the last questions. Are we are we having yesterday's discussions here? Uh, and uh, um, um, maybe adding adding to this, maybe also you, you said the change, it maybe not, may not be within jobs, 
and uh, uh, may not uh, um, the change will be within jobs and within companies. But I think mm. for me as a social scientist, without uh, and, and and claiming it's not a yesterday question, is the question which jobs and which companies and who benefits, and mm. uh, in 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 the sense. And then it doesn't make so much of a difference whether it's digitalization or artificial intelligence. But it's it's uh, the, the 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 structure, the dynamics uh, behind mm. it. And, um, I think yeah. we benefit also from that discussion. Um, mm. uh, and um, but maybe other uh, other questions in between. Me just to react on the last point. <laughs> sure. uh, I just want to think that important here is to ask how the AI changes, um, like how the AI, AI effects are qualitatively different from the effects we have seen previously. For example, the electricity you had. Mm -hmm. So is it because the pace of a change is higher? Or is it because the extent is larger or otherwise then we probably see a similar um, like trend as mm -hmm. we had before in technological change. And I think that's the key question about the qualitative difference. And then uh, if we discuss digitalization or AI, we should think about how do they differ and is that important difference, so to say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, I, I don't have any any good answers or any good ready thinking about it, but, but sort of digitalization, I think you might to some extent compared to the electricity sort of it. It's, it's everywhere. AI could be it, but it could also be something maybe totally different depending on not the machines, but actually how do we use it, the, the, the technology. It's, so it seems it's a bigger question mark in terms of what will actually happen depending on how we choose to regulate it or how we choose to, to use it. I think the fast uh, pace and extent, I think those are two things that are mm. could be qualitatively different. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I agree totally. Yeah. Thank you. It was a very nice presentation. I, I stop here now and maybe somebody else wants yeah, to I ask think we a question. could take this up in the in 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 discussion at the end. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it, it's it's worth it also to 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 take a broader perspective uh, uh, mm -hmm. on it. And for now, I, I just want, want to uh, hand over to Helena, to Helena Renstrom, to give her, uh, her input. And I'm also looking forward to see what 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 the, the specific perspective of of a, of a more, more more regional or municipal perspective could be. Thank you so much. I hope that you can see my screen. Is it working right now? Yes, perfect. Good. I just need to figure out how to change that. Uh, there we go. So my name is Helena Renstrom. I'm the marketing manager of Schleftu Municipality. I also have a, a research background. So I have a PhD in marketing from Hanke School of Economics. And I've been working as a marketing manager for 10 years now. Um, and I thought I'd just give you a short presentation of what is happening um, in Schleftu, but also in the north of Sweden. So I hope you need to stop me if I take too much time. <laughs> um, I don't know if all of you have been to Skellefteå. Um, it is um, in Västerbotten. Um, and Västerbotten County is a bit, um, is quite large. It's almost as large as Switzerland, which has a bit more than 8 million people. And we have 276,000 inhabitants. So it's a sparsely populated area. On the other hand, the, the region close to the coast is one of the um, most populated areas outside of the large cities in Sweden. So between Umeå in the southern parts of Västerbotten and Skellefteå and Luleå and also um, Piteå. Uh, and in the north of Sweden is where the big industries are established and, and this is also where this green transition is going on. Um, we have about soon to be 75,000 inhabitants, uh, which is actually a goal, a uh, 30 year goal that we will pass uh, this year, hopefully, uh, because we have been in a very declining situation and declining population 
Um, and the reason for this is, as you know, an aging population, or as I usually say, a lack of young people. Because in 1994 and onwards, the, the population left Shreftio. Uh, I was among them. I came back 20 years later. Uh, but a large amount of the young people left Shreftio and also the other cities in, in northern Sweden. Um, at that time, we had a rather high unemployment. And today, we have a very low unemployment. And if you look at the figures, you can see that we have 3.4% unemployment in April this year, which is, um, if you compare to, to Stockholm, it is about 6% unemployment. Uh, we have a double amount of jobs compared to people who are unemployed. So we don't even have unemployed people uh, enough for all the jobs that we have. Um, so I would like to take you to to take you through the story of why this has happened because it didn't happen by chance. It has been a very long um, work that we have done during the last ten years. Another uh, problem, if we look at the demographic um, of Shlefto, is that we have a gender bias. So we have more men in our population compared to women. And we also have more men, of course, in the industry and more women in public sector, which creates uh, also a um, salary bias in our population. So with these large industrial investments, we need to make sure that we, we do not increase this bias, which is one of our goals that we're working with. So how did we end up here, coming from this high unemployment and people moving away to a situation where people are moving in and we have we don't have even people to all the jobs that we can offer well we started 10 years ago we're looking at ourselves so we had a very large um, uh, dialogue with our citizens about why uh, they were why Schleftio is Schleftio and, and why, what are the strong parts of Schleftio and also what are the challenges of Schleftio. And we started um, talking a lot to the, the people with focus groups and the dialogues and so on. Um, and we also started to work with the brand of Schleftio, which is not a logotype and it's not campaigns. And it's not, you know, all adverts. It's about really understanding who you are and talking to the citizens of Schleftio. Uh, so we focused the first, um, I would say four or five years, just talking to the citizens of Schleftio and, and showing them good examples of great companies and great ideas that come from Schleftio. Um, and then we also had really a big uh, strategy dialogue in 2015 we, and 2014 and 2015, we had another citizen dialogue, which involved over a thousand citizens. Um, and normally when you invite to a dialogue, uh, men over 60 come to the meetings, which is fine. I mean, they, they are really important, but we want to reach um, other um, groups in the society also, because otherwise we haven't been able to listen to the whole society. Uh, so we went to SFE, which is uh, Swedish courses for immigrants, and we also went to open preschools. We went to uh, to upper secondary schools and talked to young people. We talked to old people in Kommunala Pensionärsrådet. Uh, so we tried to, to look at all the different groups of the society. Uh, we also made a goal that 50% of the strategy should come from the people. 50% of the strategy should come from research on how uh, places develop. And I would say those two, um, those two really large dialogues, they are the reason why we are um, in our position today. And they are also the reason why, one of the reasons why Northwold shows Schleftio, the battery producer, because we have a population that are interested in change and we have a population that are interested in discussing change and looking at the social um, aspect of uh, the resilience uh, of a place. I think that you, you can't do these types of changes and 
and investments unless the people are are with you. So I would like to stress the importance of of those two um, things that we were doing ten years ago. Um, and today uh, we are in a situation. Uh, so we changed the strategy and we also made an investment plan uh, focusing on the strategy. So when Northworld were looking for different places to invest in, they saw this strategy and at first they didn't even look at Schleftio, but we persuaded them to, to look at Schleftio and they found this place where you have uh, large scale industries, where you have renewable energy, where you have land, you have a strong uh, municipality with which has a, a good economic uh, position, and you also have a population that are ready to, to change. So at the moment, we have 100 billion Swedish crowns that will be invested from private as well as public partners in Schleftio over the coming years. Uh, Northvolt is one of the investments. We are investing in a um, new part of the port and also electrifying the port. We have a new fantastic um, house, Sara Cultural Center, which is the second highest building in wood. So we have a very good um, wood building knowledge in Schleftio. Uh, we are building 9,000 homes over the coming years and Schleftio Kraft, which is owned by the municipality, is investing in in wind power and hydropower together with other companies such as Holman and other, other companies as well. We are investing over 1 billion uh, Swedish crowns in schools and preschools that has to be made to be uh, ready for um, the expansion that we are in, in front of and also in the middle of. Uh, and we are also electrifying, we have a center for electrifying of, of uh, planes. Uh, and all those investments, they are both being made by private and public investors. And then we also have Campus Schleftio, which is really important, where we have both Umeå University and Luleå Technical University. And now we have um, begun to build a cent Arctic Center of Energy, and also the new um, Schleftio Universities Alliance is, is coming um, um, it's on on its way to, to be sort of a basis also for this reskilling and upskilling of the people. So this Northwold site is not looking like this. This is a winter picture, uh, but it's a big site. And of course, they need a lot of people. Uh, they need about 4,000 people. And the difference um, is that in Schlefti, we need non-academics. So looking at this, um, investment, a lot of them, about 80% of the people that are needed are non-academics. And um, if we look at migration patterns in Sweden, academics are more inclined to move and, and to migrate between different cities um, and also between different countries. So this is really a challenge for us um, when attracting people to move to Schleftio because non-academics are, are quite stable in their preferences of where, where to live. Um, another problem that we had is that other people need to realize what is happening in the north. And even if we knew that this was happening and the company was growing and they are building as we speak, Still, the government a few years ago didn't really believe that this was going to happen. So it meant that Trafikverket didn't really invest um, in the things that they we need. Um, also, looking at the uh, educational market or looking at other, uh, SCB has said, for example, that we would decline in population, uh, which is not true because the investments that I showed you, they are not the the possible investments, they are the decided investments. So they will be investments. They're not sort of made up. Um, so we had a scenario analysis and looked at all the investments. What did they mean for the population and also for the jobs? So now we have a new goal. We had a goal of 80,000 before, and now we have a goal of 90,000. It doesn't seem very much, but for us, it means that we need to double the people that move into Schleftio each year over the coming 10 years. So for us, it's a really big achievement to reach this goal. So 
So the population need to increase with 16,000 people over the coming, I would say, seven years now on top of the normal inflow we have normally about 2000 and 2500 people so we need at least 4000 or 4500 people moving to Schleftio each year um on the basis of this scenario we can see that we will have about 4000 more children in schools both in, in preschool schools and upper secondary education and also based on this scenario, we will have about 800 more people in elderly care. It's not based on the inflow of people because um, looking at migration patterns, we sort of stop migrating after 40. We also have a bit of a migration patterns after 60, after the retirement, but it's quite small numbers. So talent attraction is, of course, um, obviously our main challenge. Um, and, and also not only attracting, but seeing how we can use all uh, citizens of Schleftu. So we try to also look at how we can include the competence of our senior co-workers in, for example, flexible uh, working schemes, um, also looking at what you can, uh, what parts of a job um, is able to be done by young people and, and what parts of the job can be done by pe people who are more senior. And also looking at um, different career choices. Normally you go to, through a career where you become a manager or a leader, but there can also be different types of career choices where you switch uh, divisions or where you can be a senior advisor to someone else. So there are many things that can be done. And also, of course, we need to build all the homes and also um, elderly cares and all the schools that need to be done in order to achieve this. And I think one important is aspect here is that this is done by one municipality. And the change and the green transition is something that will be important not only for Sweden, but for Europe. So how can we support our small societies like Schleftio, Boden, Kiruna, Gällivare and Luleå in order to be successful in this green transition because it's really hard for us to make it on our own with all the investments that are needed. So this is everything from me. So welcome to Schleftio and, and I'm looking forward to the discussions to come. Yeah, thanks a lot, and uh, for the, for the insight, also for the for the insight and the complexity of the of the ongoing change, uh, not just in terms of age, but also in terms of, of qualification, and also the, the focus on uh, the connection between between educational levels and migration, for example, also uh, migration to the to the north within Sweden. I think it's, yeah, it's, I, can, uh, I can add also that we our books is building the uh, vocational training has increased with five hundred percent. Uh, so we need teachers, <laughs> of course. They are part of this lack of competence. Mm. And also they have looked at new types of tasks in uh, the schools to be able to support the teachers, to, to take care of administration, for example, or other things that teachers do in order to, to support those who are teachers and who are valid teachers. Mm. For me, interesting this 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 uh, perspective is that that uh, the solution is of is of course to to uh, in in population growth or to migration to where you left you and not not in keeping those people that you have in, uh, in the system longer in at least from 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 a late work perspective. Of course, this I mean you have you have population there you're not depopulated uh, totally, but uh, um, it's mostly about uh, the the question uh, bringing bringing younger Swedes or bring bringing people from outside of Sweden. Yeah, and I would I like to add, add to, to Lars um, complexity when it comes to the competence uh, with this, um, uh, what is it, we need to build capacity in the companies, but also in public organizations mm. to be able to, to um, incorporate international staff. Because in 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 our companies, of course, in the big companies, they, they talk English, that's the sort of their their standard language but then we have another 6500 companies 
in Skellefteå uh, who need also competence. And, and we need to be able to also achieve this inclusion from uh, an international perspective. But I think it's also a very important aspect of keeping people also working and, and making the flexibility uh, possible for, for uh, people to stay and work um, longer um, mm. when they are over 64 or 65. Yeah, but it's not 64 and 65. I mean, this this is I think it's also a little bit misleading because it's it's also also 55 and 60 plus where people don't uh, yeah. have the chance to re-enter because of whatever something between lack of qualification and and mm -hmm. lack of trust in their qualification. Uh, um, so there 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 is this potential, and we we see that certain groups are are, are dropping out, and obviously we we don't trust yeah. in, in these these groups because the lack also what 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 Lars said the, the 70,000 to 100,000. Missing experts, of course. This also comes uh, from from exit, of course, uh, because mm. uh, uh, the uh, quite quite a strong generation is mm. leaving the labor market. If you keep this longer, if they keep them longer anyway, you at least smoothen uh, uh, mm. this, uh, this, this this problem. You will not solve it, of course. Uh, and and the question is also if 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 they have the right qualification. And you talked about reskilling and upskilling, but also maintaining skills is, is, mm. is of course an uh, issue so avoiding dequalification by 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 lack of 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 of, uh, of, of ongoing uh, um, training is of course an issue but maybe that's a different situation between the community which needs which has growth and 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 society which doesn't have so much growth but the restructuring but is there questions in besides of uh yeah um, last yeah just a short question uh how do you think the the I mean, instability, uncertainty on the uh, property market, increased interest rates, etc., will affect the, the need to to build new homes. Uh, yes, we have. Um, we are keeping up with the goals, uh, yeah. 2022 and 2023, and we can see that the pro Schleswig is actually one of the cities where um, property uh, projects are being started right now and um, but after 2025 we have a program mm -hmm. so 2025 and 2026 and actually 2026 is the year where Northwald will have the highest uh, production and also mm -hmm. the most people but also where we have the highest number of um, what do you say um people who come here and work only for a limited amount of time i don't know what you call it in, in english mm. uh, because we're also building the north botnian railway yeah. uh, so we have on top of the five thousand that then will be working in northwood we have another three thousand people who will be working with building and construction uh only on on part time so we need also those um um short time possibilities to, to live somewhere and we don't have enough of hotel rooms or camping sites or um container parks mm -hmm. so yes it's a it's a bit of a challenge but we can see mm -hmm. positive glimpse mm -hmm. also <laughs> I think there's a question in the, the chat to Heliana as well. Uh, can you do where is? Uh, she says she would like to read it, and that okay. we read it for her. So, okay, we, yeah, we, we we can read it also because we're interesting, and 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 to, uh, Helena's talk was especially fascinating. So this is just. Uh, Phrasing, but the question to Helena is: Given that you intend to attract a younger cohort from outside uh, to your area, what activities did you employ to attract younger people to repopulate your area? I mean, in other parts uh, of Sweden, and what are the regions you targeted for attracting them more the north or more from the more densely populated south? Which one was more successful, and why? Yes, well, I can talk for a day <laughs> about this, but I won't. Uh, we have a problem. Another challenge, I would say, is that 86 of the population, 86 percent of the population that has moved to Schleswig previously has come from Västerbotten and Norrbotten. That means the north of Sweden. Mm. 
Mm. So if we continue with the same things that we've been doing over the last 20 years, we won't succeed. We will only create a salary spiral and then we will only take the confidence from each other. So what we have been doing and have been doing for the last 10 years is, of course, working on this attractiveness and showing the attractiveness of Schlefti, because we know that Schlefti is attractive, but we realize that the rest of the world don't even know where Schlefti is. So uh, as a small municipality, you have to have a budget for communications. Um, I think that's really important. But this is also something that is very questioned sometimes by the citizens. Why should we communicate and why should we talk about attractiveness? But we need to do this. And, and we've done it through, for example, keeping um, a very good relationship to the people who have been moving out from Schleftio. So over the last 10 years, 20,000 people have been moving away from Schleftio. So we keep contact with these people uh, and we go to events together, for example, with Pite, which is another community in, in the north. We uh, rent Skansen, which is a place in, in um, uh, Stockholm, a very nice place. And we invite uh, people who have been living in, in Schleswig and Pite previously, because if we look at the migration patterns and Rickard Eriksson, for example, who is a professor in uh, cultural geography at Serum in Umeå, and uh, we can see that these are sort of the low hanging fruit. If you um, if you want to put your money, your tax money into something, you should put it into people who have, who have had a relationship with Schleswig or the North previously, if you want to track them. But it's not enough. So we need to reach outside this group. And then we've been looking at both municipalities and regions where you have a high um, uh, unemployment, where you have the, the right type of competence, which is industrial competence, operators competence, automation operators, but also for the public sector, we need everyone more or less. We need, of course, teachers and, and uh, preschool teachers and so on. So we are looking very closely to the analysis of where we have a high unemployment rate and also thinking that it's probably easier to move from, um, say, Karlstad to Schlefti because it's a bit the same size instead of moving from Stockholm to Schlefti if you don't know the area. And we also, together with Visit Schlefti, working with the people who are interested in visiting us. So we direct different digital campaigns directly to the people who are interested in, in visiting North Sweden. And this has been very successful because we both get their background and we know where they work. So we can have different digital campaigns directed to each group um, within their area. So it has been very good. But I would say that one of the problems with this is that we come from a society with a very high social capital. It means that we know each other, we have very tight networks, and our companies are quite used to, to you know, uh, you you sort of um, take the the next door neighbor when you want when you look for new competence. Or you have your networks that you use to to uh, attract from. But now we have to attract people that you don't even know, and they don't even maybe speak Swedish. So this is also sort of the maturity and the upscaling of the mm. ability to um, attract uh, from other regions. And then you have a, a different challenge is when you have those 6,500 companies, um, mostly in the industry or many in the industry, they're not used to working with their brand, with the attractiveness of themselves as an employer. Whereas Northvolt is, um, I think they are the most attractive employer in Sweden. And, and these compete in a way towards each other. So we need to, to, to really support the companies also in their attractiveness to be able to attract those people moving here. So Northvolt are employing about 100 people per month now, and they are about 1,000 people in Schlefti already working. And then we have another um, two and two or 3,000 working on the site with the construction, with uh, installing um, the things that they are installing in the factory and so on. So, um, yeah, it was a very long answer, but we are doing, we are working in digital and events and, and everything to attract people. 
May, may I ask a so No, uh, Jana. Sorry. Oh, thank you. Uh, thanks to all three presenters. Uh, really impressive um, and a lot of um, food for thought. So, so thanks a lot. Uh, I was impressed with your question, Lars. Uh, Lars um, are we asking the right questions or are we asking outdated questions? So here's one for me, uh, from me to you, um, all three of you, I'd say. Um, and do you think that extending working lives is really the right way to go. So wonder uh, whether we should be talking more about the quality of life rather than extending working life. So wonder your, what's your position on it. And Helena, um, I lived in Umea for, for a while. So as an international migrant, obviously, I do appreciate your efforts. They, they, they are really impressive. But I do wonder, um, how are you going to get international migrants to come up north? Uh, the living conditions there, you know, for for a standard migrant from outside Sweden are quite um, severe and let's say extreme even. So um, is this kind of what, what you presented today really truly is fascinating. And I just wonder, do you think this is the, it brings the competitive edge that uh, Sheleftio may need vis-a-vis uh, -vis Stockholm or um, other areas in in which obviously rejuvenation is is uh, also highly needed. Thank you. And by the way, Andreas, thank you ever so much for organizing this. I really find this format incredibly useful. Well, I have to give this to 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 Gulen mostly, and even to organize especially specifically the webinar series. Yeah, sorry. So maybe Lars would like to start, or the yeah. I've been worried, I've been talking so much. <laughs> okay, yes, I, I I can start with a rather short answer. I think we should be extending working life, or maybe not working life, but extending the active life where you sort of maybe work or maybe study or maybe are an entrepreneur. But at the same time, I think actually we should be working less per, per, per year, sort of decreasing the number of working hours, but maybe extending that period that we are active in different sense and and also i think that at least in sweden you could discuss if we maybe could enter the labor market earlier we are all late enterers on the labor market in sweden so maybe that would be as big a, a potential as increasing older working life but, but my question is actually we should be active for a longer period but but, but maybe not working more as as we see it anyway yeah, I can also add something on this question because I think um, the question for um, inclusive and equal extended working life is not only about working more years. It's like a possibility to um, basically um, the possibility to combine, uh, for instance, education periods and work periods. Mm -hmm. That's one thing. And then we talk about lifelong learning, right? Uh, it was also a possibility to re-enter labor market. It's a possibility to change job, mm. um, change uh, profession. And then, uh, so this activity then, in a sense, if we talk about combination between education, for example, mm. and uh, work, that could be called as an activity. But then if we do continue that throughout the whole working life or this active period we actually give people opportunities to work longer and we have a chance to um, have the competences so the people who already have jobs for example could continue working in these jobs so i think this would be the um, main uh, point with extending the working life not just extending the years in itself mm -hmm. Hope that makes sense. Yeah, and and I would say I of course I agree with with you, and I would add that I think that we need to look at the flexibility and also the what they are working with, and make sure that they can have a, a good working life also in the later years. Um, one of my boys in school, his favorite teacher is Spieg. He's about 70 years old and he comes in when, when someone else is sick, obviously. And, and I think those types of, of solutions where you can actually retire, but you can come back and you can work a few hours. And I think that digitalization 
would actually provide us with opportunity to find those spaces because in public sector we are a bit too strict on the schedules and, and it's um, mm. sometimes a bit hard to find those little uh, possibilities where you can come in and provide your expertise um, and also work together with younger um, co-workers who, have, who, are, who are less experienced and could, could get into the job much faster with a senior um, co-worker by, by, by their side where the senior co-worker doesn't have to have the responsibility. So I think there is rather trying to see the flexibility in the working life and also share different positions. We have a lack of nurses, for example, in the municipality and also in the region. So why can't we have combined um, uh, nurses where they can work in both organizations and but not have the problems with working in two organizations? So I really think that we need to share and see how we can sort of uh, use really the the make the the good positions for these people uh, where they are feel they the, where they are feeling as they are wanted in our organization that's really important and and also looking at the the attractive of, of international talents uh we can see that it's possible and we are doing this and we are also finding people but we need to be really target focused so and we don't have the money a municipality would never have the money to be able to attract people from all Europe so we need to work together and one really important aspect that in Sweden we do not have a part an actor that is responsible for talent attraction to Sweden in Finland they have it in Denmark they have it in Canada, they have these types of parties, but Sweden don't. And you can't put the responsibility on a small municipality in the north <laughs> to do this. We don't have the money. We don't have the, the strength to do it. So the, the, we need a governmental solution here uh, that will support us. Well, let's, let's, may, may I say two sentences to this? Because one, one is, that immigration is maybe not the highest priority at of, of the current in, in, in the current national policies. Maybe uh, this this may be also uh, an issue. The other thing is is uh, you said that we have to work longer, maybe not not so intensively uh, in, in the beginning, and then then we are back to age integrated working lives, uh, which means uh, starting starting earlier, uh, stopping retiring later, and uh, and having having entries and re entries. Uh, also in the midst or, or possibilities to change at these in, in in the middle, which then could could maybe also relate to your strategy to 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 say well usually it's people below forty that migrate to to, to left here, which is of course uh, 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 an empirical fact, but may, maybe ne nevertheless not not a basis for a strategy uh, only to assume that you can only migrate under forty. Uh, and maybe you can be more successful even uh, even there. I don't I don't know, but at least uh, assuming that this is uh, the target group. Because if you uh, if you pick the raisins in, in, in Stockholm and Gothenburg to to uh, and, and bring then then you are, of course have you 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 exacerbating the demographic problem in these areas within Sweden. And uh, this is uh, uh, maybe maybe difficult. I can't say much about migration. I, I just. Uh, uh, to 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 the very north. I've never been up north, north, not not never been north, more here. north than Falun. But <laughs> uh, but uh, we just we just had one example of a Spaniard who who accepted or he, who standed for two weeks here, no shipping, and said he can't live in the north. So it seems seems to be um, uh, seems to be an an, an issue. Uh, I can add something about migration. Um... Basically, I, I did a study about um, migrants uh, from Baltic states to Sweden. And one of the main ways or entrances to Swedish market is networks. So it's not about advertisement. Um, it's not about like uh, looking for talents. It's about if you have a network, you know someone who can help you with the work, with information about job and so on. Um, it's a cousin, it's a, a friend from a school, it's people living in the same village, 
moving to the same village in Sweden and so on. And another is the um, hosting of workers or the companies from EU member states who are doing jobs basically in the Nordic countries or in other countries in Europe. And then they come with their own workers. Then they often uh, um, afterwards, if these companies are successful, they establish an office in Sweden or their company in Sweden. And often the workers are then going from like, for example, Lithuanian company to Swedish company, and they work there a bit, and then they go further into Swedish companies. So that's the two, uh, that's the second common pathway uh, for entering um, Sweden or, yeah, the Nordic countries in general. But that was uh, a point from my previous background <laughs> in migration studies. Yeah, we yeah. have a, a very important expat network in Schleswig with, uh, I would say, maybe 800 people active in this network. And they are really important for this. And, and we actually went to England to find teachers. And we used this strategy where you have uh, former uh, British people who took contact and, and were sort of um, a source of information for these people. and. We met only 20 people, but we succeeded in making uh, seven families move out of these 20. So it was a very successful way of doing it. But then you have the teaching license that is sort of problematic when you don't have the Swedish teaching license. So it's a good, we know that it's a good way of doing it. I think the bigger question here is like, does it really work as a strategy to just exchange, uh, uh, how to say, uh, move uh, talents from one country to another, and in this way try to fill our um, available vacancies? Uh, and we usually see that people who are moving, they are also um, not the ones who are furthest from the labor market. So they could also have possibilities to work or even are working in the countries where they're moving from. So I think um, that you would raise this question of like just competing within the North for the talent. So I think it's the same question as like, is it a strategy to move people around in Europe? Would that help for our um, depopulating areas or to fill the needs of the shrinking labor force? Yeah, it's a valid question. And, and when it comes to Shrestu, the example here, we are also looking for people from Asia because that is where they have the battery knowledge uh, and also people from Canada and US. So um, it's not only Europe, I would say. So it depends on on where they have the, the competence that the companies or the municipality is looking for. Oh, do we have any more questions? Otherwise, I think that's it's basically a, uh, a, opening it, opening it to this this migration issue. Uh, it's, it's, it's maybe good, maybe not not an end point, but at least an, an, a starting point for further discussions after after the webinar. Um, did I miss any any hand also? Obviously not. So then, yeah, I would like to thank you speci specifically, uh, Lars and Helena. On the, uh, for the for the for the contribution, of course, Indo. Thank you very much for for your initial in, in for the for the input in in the beginning. And uh, um, yeah, I'd like to thank you for 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 your for your for your contributions. Hope to see you in the next webinar. Uh, Gulen and Indo, do we have a next webinar to announce? By the way, I'm not sure, Gulen. You know, at least we have we, we have we have a plan for for future webinars. I don't know if you have them on the agenda but already. That will be after summer, so I don't think we, we have announced it yet. Okay. But we will come out with announcements, definitely. Yeah, and we hope we can send you the invitations and hope to see you soon here in uh, in, in, in autumn again. Thank you very much for, for today. Uh, have a thank nice, you for being sunny able to afternoon. Yeah, yeah, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.